You're listening to The Real Short Box, a comic book podcast made for geeks by geeks. Hello out there, everybody, and welcome Hi. to The Real Short Box. <laughs> <laughs> my, name is, my name is Darren. <laughs> Sitting across from me is Donald, and uh, to my left is uh, Supreme Chancellor Kevin. All right, so here's the thing. We are going to do something a little unusual with our format. Right away, we are going to get to a phone call, a man with a very busy schedule. We are talking about one of the legends of comic books, hey guys, Mr. Hey guys, Neil guys, Adams. Hey guys, hey guys, I don't have a busy schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I find it hard to believe, Neil. Hey, I think this is going to be the country for town. Hey, Hello. Hey, Anybody out there? <laughs> hey, hey, Neil, I'm in the hype business, so you know I, I I have to make this look like you have a busy schedule, my I friend. I know, I know. It's, it seems like it, like it ought to be, but I, you know, I put in uh, three calls to DC Comics. I couldn't even find them. <laughs> <laughs> I, where Where did you guys go? <laughs> I don't know. You got the wrong president, man. I don't know. <laughs> Hey, hey, Neil, this is Kevin. Just to let you know, we are 10 days apart, which in our birthdays. You're a fellow Gemini. Oh, really? Yep, I'm on yes, the 5th, I'm on yes, the 5th you're on the 15th. Are, but we are many years apart, my friend. Yes, that is true. Yes. He, he, yeah. you, oh. you'll, be, you'll be an old fart like you are. Oh, true. But I'm also from the New York area as well, just like you. Oh, so you're a smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am, actually. Yes, I am. Okay, check his ass, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that, that's going to get right into our first question. So, according to okay. the, the interwebs, my friend, you were born in Governor's Island, New York, and I just heard from a source here, you used to hang out at Coney Island quite a bit. Well, first, in Governor's Island, that would imply that I was born underground. <laughs> uh, no, I was born on the island in a hospital, just like regular folks. But the good, the interesting thing about it is when people ask me where I was born, I say, I, 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 New York. Uh, <laughs> Me but too. there's this island, you see, in the middle of the river. And it's an army base, and they have a hospital there. So my granddaughter, uh, who went out to Governor's Island because they were doing all kinds of refurbishing and building out there, uh, she noticed, she, she came back, and uh, she's kind of a smart ass too, because of course <laughs> she's a New Yorker. She came back and she said, Grandpa, there's a plaque out there that talked about famous people who were born on Governor's Island, and you're right at the top. Really? <laughs> really, yeah. Oh, it's a plaque. That's right? got to be a Neil good Adams. feeling. That, uh, Neil Adams, born on Governor's Island. Of course, that plaque will go down pretty soon with the reconstruction, but still. <laughs> go. And you, you said you, you were not, not into the hype. Okay. So our no, first no, question no. here is, what made you want to open up your own shop here in Burbank, sir? Didn't you forget the Isle of Coney? I did forget the come Isle on, of Coney. Come on, come on. I'm just like, I'm like Jim Nance here. I just move, move, move. But yeah, go ahead. Talk about the, the Isle of Coney. Yes, the Isle of Coney. It's a, uh, it's a it's a Greek island. It's in the middle of the Aegean. And you had to go past the uh, mermaids. And, are you guys listening to me? What's wrong with you? <laughs> absolutely. I'm absolutely <laughs> listening to you. Brooklyn's an amazing you place. You are master misdirector. I love it. It's a Greek island. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. I spent a lot of years in Coney Island. In fact, if you guys listen to our uh, our auctions, which of course we're doing a lot now, because guess what? There's no comic book convention. Yeah, um, I'm doing doing a lot of auctions, and we're doing like two a week um, out of the New York studio. Uh, the, the, our studio is basically closed. You know, it's, you know, everybody's closing their business, but we can be there, and uh, we're doing. Uh, uh, auctions and sales on Tuesdays and Fridays and we're going to be starting up a sale uh, in association with the Krusty Bunker soon. Uh, we've been trying and experimenting with it and I think it's going to be really good because people are going to uh, really know what's going on and uh, be aware of everything because Nick there uh, is aware of everything. He knows exactly what's going on. He even reads the comic books. Say yes. hi to the people, Nick. <laughs> you know? Hi, people. <laughs> Nick's a brilliant young man. Oh, oh, well, I young. don't know how brilliant, but I mean, he reads comic books. I don't know how brilliant he could be when you think about it, you know. So, so Neil, have you, you have you ever personally attended the Coney Island hot dog eating contest? No, I wouldn't do that. That's no, that's for uh, that's for esoteric and elite people. <laughs> uh, I, I would never do that slobbering a, a hot dog down my throat. But I have been there on uh, that uh, the middle of the winter where you do that arctic thing where you go out for one day and you go to the beach and go into the water. Oh yeah, the polar bear. Your, 
the nodes off. It's really the polar bear plunge, wonderful, right? It's a wonderful. Let me just say this: Coney Island is a wonderful place if you're nuts. <laughs> I, I was not nuts when I went there, but I had become nuts. And so one of the things that I do is I tell stories at our auctions before we start our auctions off. And uh, some of the best stories actually take place in Coney Island or the Isle of Coney. The knife fight under the boardwalk, for example, that was a good one. Now, wouldn't you agree that Nathan's hot dogs are superior to Pink's hot dogs out here? I just mentioned the knife fight under the boardwalk, and you're talking about Nathan's hot dogs. I'm sorry. He likes to cut his hot dogs in half, my friend. I do. Using a knife. knife I do. A knife fight under the boardwalk, guys. That's brutal. (laughs) Did you win? Did you win? I'm alive. (laughs) I'm alive. I guess you should see the other guy. Right out in bushy tails. Or not. And the other guys, the other, the other guys went away for a couple of years. Not so good. <laughs> the, cops, the cops are pretty good at Coney Island. They 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 jump right to it. So they uh, they got these guys, and they had bad, really bad reputations to begin with. So they shouldn't have started with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's you why know? you're a survivor, Neil. Yeah. Well. Anyway, so uh, I also worked on a carousel. Uh, the best, probably the best carousel in the world. Of course, anybody who works on any ride anywhere thinks it's the best one in the world. We did have a thing called the steeplechase carousel, and my least favorite part about it was to try to get the 400-pound fat ladies <laughs> from going up on those horses <laughs> too high off the ground. That's scary. Actually, for them to actually levitate up to them. So that That's pretty scary. Them, so that we had to kind of lift them and push them up, first to get their leg on the stirrup, and then to kind of launch them up because, you know, Ladies that weigh 400 pounds, there's really no hand grips. You know, well, that, there's a regular, lot of things to hold on regular, to. Regular people have elbows and arms and stuff, but big fat ladies, they have like big, big chunky blobby areas that you just have to kind of hoist. But, but Neil, you, you certainly had a handle on the situation. I, I, it, it, wiggled around, it wiggled around. It wiggled around. And they'll they'll get up there, but you sort of have, it's, you can imagine seeing a Warner Brothers cartoon and, or what some kind of cartoon. And the guy gets behind the lady and pushes up with his back, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, they want to get off by themselves, you see? Yeah. And so you say, ma'am, 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 can you just, can you, can you just wait till the horse comes down? Wait till the horse comes down. Yeah, no, no, ma'am, don't do that. No, don't do that, lady. Oh. Anyway, so they, like, then one particular lady fell on her keister, but she had her foot in the stirrup. Mm. Think about that. Ow. Think about the view. So, the so why weren't you pointing them more towards the uh, the benches there? You know, those benches. Oh, we, that... oh, the, oh, the, oh, I don't have to go on that bench. I can, <laughs> get up there. I can get up there. Don't worry about me. Oh. All right. We, we are currently talking to uh, comic book, uh, a comic book legend here, Neil Adams, and also, as oh. I'm now learning, a ride operator at Coney Island uh, who is oh, multi-talented. They, oh, they, they wouldn't let me ride, operate the ride. The ride was for the boss. Oh. Big Jim McCullough. Big Jim McCullough. Uh, I was like, uh, okay, at a, I was a, okay, let me put it this way. You didn't really work there, did you? <laughs> I did not only work there, I was the, the, the least attractive, ugliest guy there. Uh, don't say that. And, well, no, I'm, tell, I'm telling you, every other guy was like so good looking, man. They, they, they specialized in hiring good looking guys. You know why? Why? If you wanted to get the girls to ride. Ah. And if you got the girls to ride, then the sailors and the soldiers, they would ride after them. We're still talking about the, the carousel, gold. though, right? They'd catch the gold ring and give it to a girl and get the girl get a free ride, and they might have a date tonight. All right. There you go. That's that, so bad. That's not so bad at all. So we specialize in good-looking guys, except for, well, me, you know, freckle-faced, four-eyed. Well, well, actually, yeah. I, I see a photo here that was just handed to me by your associate from the third San Diego Comic Con. At the Moscone Center. Uh, at the Moscone Center with, with you standing next to Jack Kirby. And I, I don't know, sir. I mean, I, I, I'm i partially opinionated. Maybe you're not quite as, as bad uh, looking as you said, although the no, pocket protector is no, not I'm really. Not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I, I was bad looking. I'm saying I was the worst looking of those guys. But that's some masculine chest hair I'm looking at, sir. That Yeah, well, you should have seen the guys on the ride. <laughs> We got the girls on the ride. And that's the most important thing. 
That's All right. right. So we want to move on to your your shop here, sir. Uh, we're just yeah, but what? I'm stopping you, aren't I? Uh, you you uh, are absolutely stopping me. You are. I mean, it's it is hey, it is your world, and you're merely living. Neil in. is the guest, so let him be. I I am letting I him be, but I I can still push in my agenda while he's got he's got to move along. Right. I get it. Yeah. I get so it. So we're gonna talk about the Cresty Bunker. Yes. Yeah. What, what inspired I'm, you? I'm Magnolia between, between Pass and Coenga, and I, the only reason I remember that is because I love to say Coenga. It's a cool name. Coenga. When, when you can, Indian was named Coenga. You can always tell when people are new when they move here. When they can, it's always like uh, Tajunga oh, and Kahanga. Oh, that was me. Yeah, right. exactly. That was me. Right. Yeah. You're right. It is to- totally true. Like Hashim. Yeah. So after having you know a long career working, you know. What do you mean after? What do you think I do now? Uh, oh, hold on now. Hold uh, on my, apologies. Yeah, my apologies. My yeah, apologies, sir. During your uh, all right. Have you read the last issue of, of, of Batman versus Ra's al Ghul? You're not paying attention. Uh, yes, yes, sir. My my apologies, Mr. Well, Adams. I'm I'm sitting here with a copy of uh, Batman number two thirty two, looking at that. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm well aware of your Ra's al Ghul glory for sure. Oh, you're talking about you're talking about the old. Uh, you're talking about the stuff my dad did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, so, you pause, see the pause you did there? It was pretty good. Something your dad did, yeah. <laughs> well, your dad, my dad did that. <laughs> so, so the deal here is <laughs> how to phrase this. Uh, what inspired you to open up this comic book store, sir? Okay, so you guys don't necessarily know this, and there's no reason why you should, but <laughs> see, I suddenly got serious. I sounded serious for a minute there, didn't I? But I'm not going to continue that way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just going to continue. It's like Donald Trump throwing you off thinking he's going to be sincere. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so we had a, an art studio there, and we would travel back and forth from New York to L.A. doing uh, animation design and uh, storyboards, comps, and animatics uh, in, for the advertising business, and that was our studio. And uh, for a while, it was successful. Then it stopped being successful, and it became too wearing to go back and forth from L.A. to New York, except for things like selling uh, projects to Hollywood and stuff. We did a, a, a one year of Bucky O'Hare cartoon shows, uh, and that put us back and forth quite a bit. But it, it just didn't work out for us. So the question was, uh, what are we going to do with the building? Am I going to sell the building? I've been there for. We had that building for thirty years. Mm, thirty wow. years. All the time, my son Josh, uh, another cartoonist that you should know about, uh, comic book guy Josh Adams, um, uh, was born and grew up. So we had that all that time, 30 years, and uh, then the question was, what do we do? It's losing money. Uh, do we rent it to somebody? Do we sell the building? Or, you know what? Why don't we have a comic book shop? Yeah. And I am the best landlord in the world. I'm telling you. There you go. I, hey, Nick, am I the greatest landlord? You are amazing, sir. There you go. Yes, there you go. So with a great landlord like me, why not have a comic book shop? Absolutely. Of course, we didn't expect viruses to come along and stuff like that. And right. we didn't necessarily <laughs> expect uh, the comic book business to be as rough as it was, although I had been warned. Uh, the truth of the matter is that I love comic book shops. I, I, I visited comic book shops on a constant basis and going to these conventions all the time. I was a guest at a lot of comic book shops, and I was warned against ever doing a comic book shop. And I think what happened was they warned me just enough. They just said, it's terrible, it's awful, don't ever do it, which, of course, made me say, I think I'm going to open a comic book shop. But, yeah. you, but you didn't just stop at a comic book shop, did you, Neil? No, I didn't. I, that, that damn gaming, you know? <laughs> it gets under your fingernails. I had two buildings. What am I going to do? You know, right. I could leave the comic book shop into the other building, or you know what? I get really good chairs. People will like to sit on them and That's play true. games. That's true. I like and a comfy chair. And the aren't the chairs nice? I'm sitting oh. in it now. Yeah. Very comfortable, sir. Yeah, mostly, mostly you get those like uh, those tin chairs that you get from school. <laughs> and, you know, it's like I don't know what the hell those things are, but my wife Marilyn uh, shopped for chairs on the internet, and she said, you know, these only cost maybe I don't know twice what the other ones cost. Why don't we get good chairs? Oh, God so bless. So by us. golly, we got good chairs. We got some TVs there if we want to do uh, a special gaming. There's all kinds of stuff available for us. It's uh, it's rigged out to be the best gaming uh, building uh, in, in L.A. I hope I hope. Yeah, yeah yes. If I, if I may interject, yes, we have uh, eight tables, two private rooms, three big television screens, and uh, uh, plenty of uh, comfy chairs uh, for miles on end. And what is what is the cost to play games here at the shop? I'm happy oh, you asked. 
Uh, Neil, do you want me to field that, or do you want to? No, no, go ahead. Um, it, it's kind of a, you know, a <laughs> tough price. A lot of people aren't comfortable with it. Right. It's the uh, high, high price of zero dollars. Are you kidding me? And zero, zero cents. So zero yeah. dollars. Now, places around town, they charge anywhere from like 10 bucks or more just for you to give you the pleasure. I know. Zero dollars is so playing, controversial. Playing your own games. Even. Exactly. Yeah, playing your own games. Not theirs. <laughs> your own games. And, and I feel that people yeah. told Neil that he needs to charge no less than $10 for this comfort zone. And Neil said, you know what? I'll do better. And you did, didn't you, sir? Well, you know, Nick, I, I, basically I, I listened to you. <laughs> and I, and, I, and, and I, I, I sat down and I thought about it. As, oh, am I going to lose a big 10 bucks? For a guy sitting down and maybe buying a game or uh, uh, telling everybody that it's a wonderful place to go to, I think I'll lose that ten bucks. Yeah, that's, that's just fine. It's that's smart, fine. smart business. It, it, drives, it, it draws people in. It was. It, it still is. Uh, people are still clamoring to get in. We're like, sorry, we're closed for your safety. Right, right. but I'm clean. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's and good. you'll stay that way. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. the only reason that we're not packed tonight, guys. I got to tell you because. Uh, Boy, were we on a build huh, until this virus came along? Yeah, our, our, it's been great. It's our been Thursdays great. had 30 to 40 people. Uh, it was almost standing room only. I, I had to set up more rooms on the comic side wow. just to make do. Now, now, guys, Nick over there is one of the managers and judges and, and uh, does a lot of these things uh, all around the country. This is an expert here. That's right. Uh, thank, I was, thank you. I was lucky enough to get Nick based on, uh, based on the uh, recommendation of Buzz. That you guys may who go to conventions, you know who Buzz is. The he's the kind of Asian guy that's very loud, and you can hear him like three blocks away. Uh, okay. yes, he's oh, a he's a New Yorker. Oh, the kind yeah. of Asian guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a very tall, large, broad-shouldered, loud Asian guy. Well, he's not that tall. Well, he's, he's for an Asian guy. He's six feet tall. He's six feet tall. That that is pretty he's tall. Got shoulders like a Sasquatch. It, by anybody's standards, I think six feet can, tall. Although he can't push up as much weight as I can, he's Ooh. pretty strong. Now, now, Neil, um, th is is this environment of like table games and comic shops? Is, is this like a new deal for you, or have you participated in this before? Well, you have to remember, I've been to comic book shops all over the country, and I've gotten to see the best, and I've gotten to see the worst. True. Mm. I'll give you uh, rather than go over the whole thing because you're there, you can see the floors. You can see the airiness. You can see the feel there. You can get you can get a sense of it. You can see there's going to be an outdoor atrium that's going to have concrete on it. It's going to be very nice, and it's going to be air conditioned. Okay, we, we have two two stuff. outdoor but atriums. I will, but I will tell you the, to be the biggest deal of all, and it just encapsulates uh, what I believe and what I what I believe in. I've been to so many comic book shops where at the end of let's say I do a signing for three hours. Okay. And it's at the end of the three hours, and I haven't gotten up to take a shit okay? <laughs> for three hours. But of course, I got to do it, right? You know, right. What do you got to do? Okay, you get up and you say, "I can I go to your uh, men's room?" They say, "Well, uh, yeah, you have to take this key, you see, and you go back there, and you, if you just go through that red door, and then you turn left and go past those boxes over there." And then you go over there and past those boxes. It's it's sort of right there, but the one on the <laughs> yeah. right. And so you make your way all the way to the back, like you're going into you know uh, get a uh, get smart uh, spy thing, uh, and you're going. And even when you go in the bathroom, sure enough, there are boxes in the bathroom because they use the bathroom to store. So you got to wheedle between the, well, yeah. the boxes, and then you sit on a toilet seat, and the damn thing wiggles around. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. That, well, most you know, shops are tiny. To, this place is huge. You're, you're trying to take a poop, right? And that damn toilet seat is wiggling around like it's doing the hula. <laughs> and you're trying to get your sphincter unlocked, and it's very, very hard. So what I do is... you got to hold up your grass I, skirt, too. What I No, let me tell you what I do. I lean down, and I tighten that bolt on the right. And I lean down the back, and I tighten that bolt on the left. Hold on, and sir. I back and I tighten up the other side, and Hold I wiggle on, a sir. little bit, and I tighten the other bolt, and I tighten the other bolt until I get that seat solid as a rock. Yes, sir. You hold on tight. And I, and I go out to that, out to the middle of that uh, uh, comic book store, and I find the owner who's usually standing in the front of the store, waiting with a big smile on his face to say goodbye. And I lean over to him and I say, "I tightened your toilet seat." <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, it, 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 Neil, I got. Usually, and, you, and usually, what he says is, "What?" I say, I tightened your toilet seat. <laughs> you tightened my toilet seat. 
Is it, and everybody in the heads, heads, everybody in the store's head whips around. You, you, you see and where when I come back, hey guys, when I come back the next year and I go into that bathroom, okay, it's first it's neater, but second, there's a plaque on the wall that says Neil Adams tightened our toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, now, in contrast, we have four bathrooms right up front, two on one side. Two on the other side, men and women. Okay, right check up in them the front seats. of the store. You walk in that door, you got to take a poop. There's the bathroom right that, there. That's it's wonderful. Neat and clean, and if you're in a wheelchair, you can get into all four of them. You're fine. I'm gonna why, check them seats why, right why now. Why do I like that? Because I'm a human being, and I like to take a shit. You know, I'm just really glad that our audience can now know that you're a regular guy in more ways than one. <laughs> regular? <laughs> Did you say regular? Guys, <laughs> <laughs> I'm regular. <laughs> Neil, oh, you're an extraordinary person. You're a very good boy. You get to take this castor oil so you can be regular, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Neil Neil has a, a high standard of moral fiber. Oh! oh. I like that. That was good. That was good. Hey, hey, hey Neil, can we actually... I learned from the best. Neil, can we ask yes. you questions about comic books? Oh, my God. He actually is checking every seat. Anything you want. Anything you want. All right. I think you can get to it past the mirage of humor. <laughs> so you've been in in this game quite a while, sir. So I want to ask you: You've seen a lot of things. Not going... so much that I can be called sir. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Go All right, ahead. going forward uh, in the the print, you know, comic industry, what type of stories do you think could be most appealing to readers right now? Uh, I think a little bit more human stories. I mean, uh, I think we've fallen into an area where we're blowing up planets and, and uh, destroying cities and killing thousands and millions of people with superpowers that are just so powerful that you can't comprehend them. And I think people would like to sit back and go, God, you know, this, these guys are like gods. I mean, I, I, I don't I can't I, I don't understand. So what you're seeing is more and more independent publishers are publishing stories about, oh, just plain murder. Yep. Like image. You know, a basket full of heads. Uh, there's, there's, um, I think a tendency to get a little bit back to reality because there's no place to go from the heroes that we had. We call them heroes. They're not heroes. They're gods. And they don't seem to care if people die. Uh, it, it, I think it's a, it's a, a weakness in the a strain of writers that we have now that, uh, ignoring, uh, death on a, uh, on a mass uh, scale is, uh, okay. I think it started with uh, Green uh, Green Lantern when uh, when it practically caused the city to be destroyed. I mean, th these are not good things. That's Nor true. Are they things Green that Lantern, wanted... he destroyed the city. It was Coast City, right? Yeah. Coast City, uh, yeah. that's right. I, I don't think I don't think I don't think we want our kids reading about things like this. They'll give us Donald Trumps <laughs> all over the place. The hard traveling There's... heroes was an excellent yeah. story from back in the day that you there that, that you Denny go. that Denny hard wrote and you drew. I don't think hard traveling heroes would do badly today. If it were created today, it would do it just fine because it's it's taking you down to a realistic level, and we do do need to get down to that stuff. There's too much of this, like you know, out there and crazy. It's like watching Marvel doing movies, and you go, "What's next? Oh my God! You know, let's, let's destroy a universe." Uh, there's it's just too much, and it's also it's there's a certain I hate to say this amorality. I don't I'm not immorality but nihilism amor where, where you kind of go, "Yeah, who gives a crap?" Well, you know, I don't want my kid to know that, and I never did. I mean, I, I'm not saying that be things were better. I'm just saying that they've run out of shit to blow up. Yeah, I and, agree. Uh, they got to get back to you know a little bit of reality. In I, fact, you know, I 100%. think I think we could use an I think we could use another comic book company coming out there and uh, and uh, doing some comic books. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Huh. I think somebody maybe by somebody who has a comic book shop in L.A. Huh. And someone with over 60 years in the game. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. It, might you, you know someone on, like that, Neil? You should keep your eye on would, guys like that, you know? Would it possibly be in continuity, you know? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe? Yeah. Oh, who would, who, 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 what would it be for me to say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, now, Neil, when we were walking around the store here, we noticed you have a number of pieces of original artwork uh, that you draw, and yeah. you've been doing that for quite a while, obviously, and we're, we're like really impressed by some of the prints that you had here, and I noticed a few of them, of course, are for sale. Um, are there in particular... Yeah, they're all for sale. Yeah, in particular... Though... Hey, guys, hey, I'm trying to understand. I'm a whore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
we can play the game, but you know, I'm not yeah. a whore. Well, I, I'm not. I'm you're honest. You can buy me. You can buy me. I'm cheap. It, it, <laughs> is there a, is there a character that you prefer drawing the most? Well, you know, kids ask me that at conventions all the time, and I know you're not a kid, but right. they ask me at conventions all the time. But the truth of the matter is. You could take the costumes off of almost any comic book superhero and put it on another character and look the same. They all look the same. They all they all got the same muscles. They're boring. I mean, <laughs> they're just muscle guys. You know, it's it's like they have no character. You, you you can't tell one from the next unless you look at their costume. You know, their faces look the same. It's like right. Betty and Veronica. You know, just change the hair. It's true. Change the other one. Uh, I would rather draw a gorilla. <laughs> hey, hey. To, to be perfectly honest, uh, the gorillas are way more fun to draw. Women are more fun to draw than men, but gorillas are really a lot of fun to draw. Well, well, giraffes too, but nah, you don't get a chance to use them very much. But gorillas, they're great. What about sloths? Well, we ha we have a ton of gorillas in sloths comic are, books. You can't see their muscles. You can't see the muscles muscles on the sloths. I've thought about that, but gorillas are uh, a good a good uh, a good. Uh, one of those older men, male gorillas, those silverbacks. Oh, there's something. So we're talking uh, Magilla gorilla or uh... oh, no, a real gorilla, you children. You see, you're a Bigfoot guy, <laughs> and one. I'm a and I'm a Littlefoot guy now. Currently, a Littlefoot guy, but you're a Bigfoot guy. So you look at Magilla gorilla. You're a so, Littlefoot guy. So you're a, a Land guy. Before Time fan. No, 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 no. Big, Bigfoot means cartoon characters. See, that's what a Bigfoot and a Littlefoot is. It's not the Bigfoot Sasquatch. The Bigfoot is a cartoon. Guys who like cartoons with big feet. And Littlefoot guys are guys with big body superheroes with little tiny feet. They're, oh. they're called Littlefoot guys. Yeah. So I am currently a Littlefoot guy. I am at heart a Bigfoot guy. But now, currently, because you can make more money at it, I'm a, I'm a Littlefoot guy. All right, so Gorilla Grodd. Now you've learned that. That's good. No, not just we have learned that. Our whole audience has learned that. Exactly. Yes. All eight people. It, it, <laughs> it's educated. That's, that's really generous. All right, seven. It's, that way they don't uh, they don't get anything. They have to stay separate. All seven of them listening from yeah, seven different locations. Six feet apart. Six you, you, feet you, apart you, gotta, you gotta social distance it, and I, I've got a great rule yeah. of thumb for this one. That's why we can't, that's why we can't open open the doors and and uh, have a. Our, our regular, you know, store opening. We can't have it. We're, we're so only we try. We try to get our comic books to people other ways, and you know, people ought to pay attention to what their local comic book stores are doing and the way they're trying to service them without being open. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're maintaining a, a Joey Ramone and height distance from each other. A good six foot six. Yeah, we're, we're all Joey Ramones. And you guys have the website? Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, we have a we have a great website. Neil, uh, you want to hawk our website for us? Well, you can talk it. You can talk it. We've basically got we've got the neiladams.com, which comes from the New York office, and now we're opening a Rusty Bunkers uh, website. It's going to be almost mostly comic books. It's going to have other stuff, but mostly like, comic, like, comic books like and, and board games. And, stuff. and board games. And, and board games, of course. Dick, how could I forget? <laughs> uh, and, and, and those bundles, Nick. How can you forget? Uh, I didn't. I'm actually holding one of the bundles. I was waiting for you to give me a good transition to, to hawk one for well, you. Let me just say, let me just say, those bundle things are really good. People just love them because it's almost a game. It's almost a game. Why don't you tell the guys about the bundles? Well, they're, we're, our bundles aren't like bundles, you know, proper. They're actually mystery boxes. Ooh. Yes. So instead of getting the uh, inexpensive mystery box, I'm going to go ahead and grab our top tier, two hundred dollar mystery box. And um, this box you is mean, really good. And uh, only I was worth a hundred two uh, hundred dollars. No, 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 no. The box is two hundred dollars. Uh, the minimum of books inside is worth more than two hundred, with the uh, chance of getting a very expensive book that will total the total of two hundred or more by itself. Um, what you don't know, Neil, is I talked to uh, your uh, uh, regional friend Kevin here, uh, your Gemini brother, and uh, I talked him into buying a mystery box. And we're going to go ahead. Uh, I've already collected the money. Don't worry. Uh, money first. I know how it works. You New Yorkers are uh, pretty crafty like that. Are you going to open one? Yeah, we're going to open one live. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see what we got. Let's go ahead. I'm going to put it right next to the microphone. And uh, let's this go ahead. Let's cheap advertising and promotion. Oh, guys. this I is really it. hard to open. Go. Oh, my goodness. It's so heavy. This thing's really tight. Oh, my. Look at all these books. 
What do we got? Well, I don't want to list the individual books. I'm going to go uh, a couple of variant covers. Uh, the Twitter box is guaranteed, your guaranteed signed books. So here's one signed by uh, 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 Bill Sankiewicz. Uh Oh, here's one Bill with Sankiewicz. Adam Hughes' signature on it. Ooh. Very good. All right, let me get to the to the very back. Uh, the, with, uh, the signatures, guys, are, are worth money. Yes, uh, your your guaranteed it's signatures, especially your signature, sir. Well, your guaranteed signatures. Well, yeah, I am. Your guaranteed homie, signatures homie in this. Is not cheap. Homie is not cheap. I gotta tell you. Your guaranteed homie. signatures in this one, uh, for sure, and wow. some varying covers. And oh, we're at the last book. What have I got here? Oh, oh, yep. You robbed the bank there, Kev. My God. Oh my goodness. Look at this. All right, this is issue two forty four of Batman. And Did you look plant at that. Did you plant that? <laughs> no, he picked the box. Oh, okay. I'm a little upset with him. I think I think he might have been taking peeks in when I wasn't looking. You peeking, Kevin? Uh, my goodness. You know, we were we were so busy checking all the uh, bathroom seats to make sure they were bolted down right. <laughs> I, think, I think Kevin snuck one past us. If you're it's approved. not a comic book shop in America that doesn't check their seats before I come to their store. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely now. What's that? Kevin, what's that at the very bottom of this issue? That looks like a classical uh, John Hancock from Neil Adams himself. Hey, those are worth 50 bucks if I don't make, make a mistake here. The 50 bucks all by itself. Yeah. At if least. you resell that, then you get... You, He's got, no, you know, he's got a, the value of the book is. he's got a great book. He, he even signed it the correct way, N E A L. <laughs> <laughs> you mean unlike Neil the Horse? True. Yes. Okay. Y- yes. Uh, so once again, uh, you uh, guys don't know Neil the Horse. What's with you? I mean, what kind of fans are you? Oh no! <laughs> if you were old and balding, you would remember Neil the Horse. Well, we don't want to uh, divulge what we know about Neil the Horse because you ac- actually you browbeating us about it is more entertaining for the audience. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I win. <laughs> real, real quick, I just wanted to mention here at uh, Krusty Bunkers, uh, you also have a pool list, and you do a. It looks like a twenty percent off discount. Is did, that correct? Did you yes. say twenty? Uh, yeah, I think there's an echo in here. Twenty percent. Let us let us, be honest. let us be honest, guys. There are there are, are comic book shops in the city that have a twenty percent discount. Not many. It's because it, it's be, not many. That's true. Uh, but there are some, and you and you guys, if you want to get a good deal, you should go to those shops and you should uh, uh, take advantage of their pull list. Uh, you should take advantage of ours if you're anywhere near us, and if you're interested in. This is the thing about it, and and this is between you, me, and the fence post. Okay, <laughs> it's, and the and, other seven and this people listening. This is semi semi serious, semi serious. I know a lot of guys in Hollywood. Okay, I've dealt with a lot of guys in Hollywood, uh, actors and uh, directors and stuff, and a lot of them are fans. And so we're communicating with them and inviting them to come to the store and take advantage of our bathrooms. Uh, and and we're trying to make a more or less a hangout of comic book artists, actors, directors, producers, and people like that. So that when you come to the store, you could run into anybody. You could run into anybody that makes Hollywood and L.A. great. And that's what we're trying to do with Krusty Bunkers. We're trying to make a place where it's sort of Neil's place. And if you come there, you may run into Jim Lee. You may run into Sylvester Stallone. You may run into, you notice I'm keeping the level low here. Uh, uh, absolutely. And, I, and, and, you can, and you can come and visit our, our store and you, do, you just don't know who you're going to run into and sit down and have a cup of coffee with on, in our little atrium area. Or, or, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful place. And by the way, one last thing, I, I, whether we're getting to the end of this or not, there's a shelf as you come in the door and you turn to the right, uh, a bookshelf that has artists, art books like Norman Rockwell and Bob Peake and Austin Briggs and Bernie Fuchs and Al Parker. Art books that are meant for art students, art directors and artists or people who wanted to be artists so that you can see the shoulders on which we stand. It is not necessarily just that you come into the store to buy a comic book, to read your comic book. It's that you come in to enjoy the art and to see the artists that went before us so that you can get a sense of a small amount of the history of where comic books come from. And if you don't buy that stuff, I'll turn my back on you because I'll and I'll ignore you because I think that more and more people ought to pay a little bit more attention to this industry and the business that we uh, that we've created mm-hmm. from artists for the last hundred years. It is an it is an art form absolutely in and of itself, and it, it definitely owes a lot of credit to the past. I I will say since you're you you're uh, very uh, influenced by uh, the wobbability of toilet seats. Um, <laughs> 
that <laughs> my bathroom. We off that serious part that you could there. That's thank good. you, thank you. My bathroom uh, is an homage to uh, comic books, and it 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 sounds strange, but I put up uh, I rotate. What a I have, surprise! What a I, surprise! I have a rotating gallery of twelve yeah. different comic books uh, at a time that are all themed based upon different things. They're holidays, where to see it. Uh, you know, Superman being uh, not a nice guy, you know, things like right. that. Um, so, Billy Robin. Right, yeah. So, you know, I, I have an appreciation of the art, and I feel like that's the only place in my home where I can get people to just stare at it, is when they're in the bathroom. And if that's where it's got to be, then that's where it's got to be. And, and, and you'd, you'd, have to close, you'd have to close your eyes and reach for the toilet paper. Exactly. <laughs> you got it. Well, you got, you got it. it. Speaking I of art, um, we are going to be having art classes here soon. Uh, it's yes. taught by the uh, the great, the only, John Bogdanoff. That's oh, right. wow. That's incredible. Well, That's... If, it, if, it, if it wasn't for this uh, virus, uh, he, he would have, he, was, it, was it this week he would have started or next week? Uh, to... It was supposed to actually start today. Hmm. Today. Oh, guys. wow. He would have been there teaching an art class today. But we're going to uh, be. Unfortunately. But he's, yeah, he's going to teach soon. As soon as we get over this. Uh, he's going to be teaching, and others will come. I'm sure that others that uh, there are a lot of people that would like to share what they've learned. And we're, we're going to be, of course. And we're going to we're going to interview John uh, hopefully sooner than later. But also on the subject of art and you know great artists, you have your art displayed prominently all over the store, and it's also just happens to be for sale. Isn't that right? That's right, because I twisted everybody's arm. <laughs> yes, this is true. This is true. We, 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 no, I said, I, in fact, I, I, in fact, as we opened the store when we went, kind of finally came to our our grand opening, uh, we shipped fifty drawings uh, from our New York studio to the LA studio to to go up for sale, so that people could buy my artwork uh, at the store at a reasonable price. And and in fact, we actually gave away one of your uh, three hundred dollar plus pieces. Well, I as didn't a... like that. I didn't like that. But, well, you know, it was a it was a door prize because whenever you make a purchase uh, at the bunker, you get a raffle oh, the ticket. Of the door, really? You got a raffle ticket when you when you purchase something? Yeah, as long as it's uh, as long as it's not like a food or beverage item. Yeah. Any purchase, comic book, game, uh, wow. pack of cards, you get a raffle ticket. Uh, your your limit is uh, seven per week. I mean, come in every day, buy one item. When's the raffle? Is it like every week or? Uh, the raffle month? the raffle is uh, Tuesday night at close. We post it on the Instagram. And the the new item is chosen that evening, and the new raffle starts Wednesday morning. New comic book day. Oh wow, that's incredible! Isn't, Jeez, isn't that Nick clever? Isn't yeah, Nick clever? you guys should have levered yeah. that. Oh man. Pay attention. To well, what we don't we don't say, we guys. we don't want to embarrass the other stores. I mean, we want to no. give everyone equal footing. Not no. everyone can have a, a a Neil Adams in their uh, sorry. wheelhouse. Sorry, sorry, other comic shops. I mean, we've got four bathrooms and Neil Adams. Right. <laughs> they have what? Maybe one bathroom. Tops and table games, and I do. You, and we have table games. Do you get a like a prize or something if you guess which bathroom Neil Adams may or may not be are in? Are you being sarcastic about my bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they are. He he actually checked every single one yeah, of them just now. Said, I did check to get all the like seats. Bubbling in your stomach, you're gonna change it. I did. <laughs> I did get up and I checked the seats, and you're right, they're secure. And so. I did have some Panda Express earlier, and you do have some of the best toilet tissue in town. Oh, don't tell everyone we have toilet tissue here because oh. we might, you know, get raided. Right. That's true. <laughs> no, that's true. They take it home with no, them every night. We, we, we only use two ply. Kate doesn't want ply. <laughs> no one likes one ply. This was toilet talk with Neil. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Let's start to take expert ex excerpts out and do a little reel on uh, toilet talk. <laughs> uh, Sounds great. <laughs> Well, Neil, uh, we're very appreciative that you joined us over the phone here. Uh, I know we ha we literally never met until one minute before we started recording, so I appreciate That's, you being yes. so full of information. But you get the feeling that I've done this before. Right? All right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely have you back on because you're, you're a lot of fun, sir. Yes, thank uh, you, you very guys, much. You guys are a lot of fun, too. We I hope appreciate you had a good that. Time there. And, and please enjoy the store. Well, uh, we love people to enjoy the store. It's our, actually our favorite thing. We'll do. Real quick, I just want to chime in because no one said it yet. We're Neil Adams, Krusty Bunkers, Comics and Toys and Games on 4710 West Magnolia Boulevard in sunny Burbank, California, 91505. Yeah, they, you, want, you want the phone number because you can't get in the store. I know, I was going to get to that next. Uh, yeah. <laughs> area code 818 980 8852. Number again is 818 
980-8852. And what's your website again, sir? Store? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, we're, we're, we're putting one up for the store. In the meantime, oh. it's neiladams.com. All right. Okay. There we Excellent. Go. Well, Neil, thank you so That's much. Neat, neat. It was, a, pleasure, it was a pleasure to have you on, and uh, we'll have you back on. Thank you for all your wonderful work in the comic book uh, industry. Uh, and, I, and, I can't love it enough. So thank you so much. For and being don't worry, this. Neil. I've been telling everyone else that we have new books coming in every week. Full lists are yep. still here. You'll get great stuff, and we have we have some great board games for people to play in isolation, like The Shining <laughs> or uh, Betrayal of House on the Hill, there or Let's Be Your Own Hero in the Living Room and play. Pandemic, wow. the game. Oh, boy. Wow. In, spite of the fact, in spite of the fact that we're not open. Yay! Yay. Yay. All right. Well, thank you, Neil. You have a great night, okay? Yeah. Bless Take you care. and your wife, Marilyn. Take care. Pandemic to you. Pandemic to you as well. <laughs> All right. Okay, bye-bye, guys. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Well, that's going to be pretty much it for us. Uh, guys, this was uh, the real short box here, and we had just interviewed Neil Adams, the legendary Neil Adams, the great Neil Adams. The one and only Neil Adams. The real Neil Adams. You and can find this podcast everywhere, guys. We are all over the internets. We are on SoundCloud now. We're we, on YouTube. We are on Sprecher. We're on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We're Spotify. On Spotify. We're on Blueberry. I think we're still on Sprecher, right? Yeah, we're on Sprecher still. Even though no one listens to us on there, except for and, one guy. So thank you, one guy that and, does that. We appreciate it. And you. actually, during this recording, we have elected to do a second podcast about the Krusty Bunker because there's so much we were not able to cover. We just might yet. Yeah, just be doing that right after this. So yeah, uh, find us on Instagram, Facebook, all the fun stuff. And uh, if we can't see you outdoors right now, in maybe... a couple of months, we'll probably see you at the comic shop. This has been The Real Short Box. We'll see you at the comic shop. Thanks for listening. 